Hello, I am Dr. George H. Meir, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing on inferior vena cava filters. For generations, the sudden onset of shortness of breath after injury or surgery often led to the rapid decline and sudden death of the patient. In modern times, the use of anticoagulation decreased the likelihood of deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolus, but some patients intolerant of anticoagulation or with contraindications to anticoagulation were still afflicted often with sudden, disastrous consequences for the individuals affected. A young surgeon in Oklahoma, Laser Greenfield, suffered just such a patient loss early in his career and discussed the problem with a local oil field engineer who related the mechanics of the problem to that of filtering oil in a pipeline. As a result, the Greenfield filter was born, a TP-shaped device that rested in the venous circulation and prevents large thrombi from traveling to the lungs to cause the severe hemodynamic derangements associated with pulmonary embolus. While anticoagulation remains the mainstay for prophylaxis and treatment of pulmonary embolus, for those who have no anticoagulation options, the placement of an IVC filter has become a standard of therapy. How are IVC filters placed? Typically, these devices are placed via either a jugular or femoral approach. Current devices are as small as six French, allowing ease of placement from many peripheral approaches. While blind placement of the, in the IVC at the L3 vertebral body has been used in the past, delineation of the left renal vein and the iliac vein bifurcation allows more precise placement. IVC duplication occurs in about 3% of patients and almost always involves the left renal vein. Thus, left renal venography coupled with an inferior vena cavagram not only defines the landing zone for the filter, but also rules out IVC duplication with its inherent risk of further emboli. Classically, the indications for placement of an IVC filter have been only two, contraindications to anticoagulation in the setting of DVT or pulmonary embolus, and second, failure of anticoagulation in preventing further DVT or pulmonary embolus. Under these circumstances, an IVC filter with or without anticoagulation may be life-saving. As IVC filters have become so ubiquitous, the indications for their placement have been significantly relaxed. Currently, classic indications for filter placement are present in a minority of patients in some series as low as 12%. Most patients have filters placed for other reasons, including DVT with high risk for pulmonary embolus, chronic lung disease with poor tolerance for pulmonary embolus, and prophylactically in high-risk patients without evidence of clotting. These alternative indications have been further increased by the availability of retrievable IVC filters, allowing removal of the device up to several months after initial placement. In this setting, the filter can be placed during the high-risk interval and removed when the risk returns to normal. While this makes a great deal of theoretical sense, in most series, only about 20% of retrievable IVC filters are ever actually retrieved. In appropriate clinical settings, inferior vena cava filters have proven benefit at reducing fatal pulmonary embolus in patients who cannot tolerate anticoagulation or who fail anticoagulation. This vascular briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about inferior vena cava filters, please visit vascularweb.org.